Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley. Thanks for joining me today. In this month's edition of the newsletter, I thought we would take a look at some alcohol inks and how you can use them in your card projects to create backgrounds or create beautiful works that you can then die cut and use on your card projects. So I'm gonna show you these techniques using both Copic refills and Ranger alcohol inks. And I'm gonna use all the Copic refills together and the Ranger alcohol inks together just to kind of keep them grouped. You can use them interchangeably. And I'm gonna be using some of this pearl mixative in both the Copic refill projects and the Ranger alcohol ink projects. So this mixative is a pearl mixative. It's also available in like gold and silver and that sort of thing, but it does tend to settle. So you're gonna wanna give this a really good shake before you use it on your projects to get all of that kind of um, pigment mixed back in. Now the cardstock matters for this type of project and I am going to be using Ranger Alcohol Ink cardstock, some Yupo papers. I also showed you the alcohol ink blending tool and the felt refills that I'm going to be using. I will be using some of the Copic Colorless Blending Solution and the alcohol ink blending solution. Now there are two types of Yupo paper. Yupo paper is a synthetic paper. It feels like plastic is what it feels like. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to describe it, but there's a translucent version and there is a white version. You can see the white version, which I'm holding now, is very opaque. You cannot see through it. The translucent one reminds me a lot of vellum, and I tend to be really drawn to that translucent version because I love vellum. And you can see here are a look at the three different card stocks here that I'll be using today. And the one that was on the top was the Ranger Alcohol Ink cardstock. That is like a regular cardstock with a glossy coating. So when you're working with these alcohol ink markers, you do want to protect your work surface. And I'm putting down an easy clean mat and then a back to a 12 by 12 paper pad just to catch some of the ink as well because I do know that that white easy clean mat will stain if I get these alcohol inks on them. And I'm starting out with a piece of transparent Yupo paper and I'm putting down a little bit of colorless blending solution, the Copic colorless blending solution right onto that paper. And then I am going to just drop on some of the ink from the Copic refills here. And you can see that this starts to move right away and these are gonna kind of move into each other. Now, at any time with these alcohol inks, if you're not happy, you can always make that ink move a little bit more, even if it's already dry, by adding some more of your blending solution. So I have a bunch of these colors on, and now I'm adding some pearl mixative to this. And I think this is so funny because these projects have so much like bold color. I actually named them the Unicorn Projects because... <laughs> These colors remind me so much of like this bright kind of fairy tale rainbow unicorn. I'm using the Color Trends color palette that they've been featuring all week over at the Ellen Hudson Classroom blog. So you can see I had all of those down. I added some colorless blending solution that caused it to move. I picked up a little bit of the ink using a paper towel. And when it dried, this is what I was left with. Now I had some areas that were pretty thick with ink and so they didn't dry so well. They wanted to actually flake off. So make sure that you're not getting too much ink in one area. So now I've switched over to the alcohol ink blending tool or application tool. It has a piece of felt on it. It's a little bit different than your regular distress blending tool because it is a felt applicator, not a foam applicator. And you can see I just add the Copic ink right onto that felt applicator and then pounced it onto my Yupo paper. Now, once again, to get that ink to move, if I wasn't happy with it, I was able to add a little bit of the colorless blending solution. And then if I wanted to go in with more color, I just simply dropped it on to my paper once again. So I decided I wanted a little bit more of that light aqua color, a little more pink. And then in order to keep this from getting too muddy, I went ahead and switched my felt on my applicator there so that I could just dab off some of that. And then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. So I'm just gonna take you through this exploration that I kind of had. I have never actually used alcohol inks before this day. So 
I am just kind of experimenting and exploring and seeing what kind of looks I can achieve with all the different ways that you can apply the alcohol inks. And you can see here, I'm switching over to the Ranger alcohol inks. It doesn't make a huge difference. And I'd say if you have some Copic refills, you may want to try this and see if it's something that you're interested in before you invest in some regular Ranger alcohol inks. I simply just chose some colors that coordinated. And you can see here, I just pounced on that color using the applicator. And on this one, I used the exact same applicator and just kind of went over another piece of this Yupo paper. And I just kind of swiped it and kind of blended it. Some of these projects as I was going, I wish I would have left them as they were because the more that I played with them, like they looked good in the beginning and then I just kept messing with them and then they looked kind of like a little bit cray cray. <laughs> So some of them, I wish I would have stopped while I was ahead, but that is the beauty of playing when you're in your craft room. And I think that we all have to just learn to take those moments to just play with the different kind of mediums that we have and see all of the different effects that we can achieve by applying them in different ways. And that was really what this day was all about. So you can see there, I swiped it onto that Yupo paper and I achieved this really cool stripey look. And now I'm taking that same applicator, I'm adding a little more ink, a little bit more of that pearl mixative, a little bit more blending solution, and once again, swiping it onto another piece. So once you have the ink on the applicator, you can actually create several different pieces with that same applicator. Now, your intensity of color may vary because you're getting a little less ink as you go on. If you want a lighter look, just like with watercolor, you're going to use more blending solution. So think of this like watercolor. If I add more water to my watercolors, I'm going to get a lighter look. That's the same thing with the blending solution. Whether you're using the Copic or the Ranger Alcohol Ink Blending Solution, the more blending solution that you add, the lighter your colors are going to be. If you want more intense color, use less of the blending solution, and that's going to give you a more intense color, just like you would with watercolor. More pigment, more color. So here's another one, another rainbow kind of unicorn look here. <laughs> and these backgrounds are really beautiful. And some of them, they look like a hot mess in certain places, but then there's other places on them that they're absolutely beautiful. And so if you get some of these backgrounds that you don't love the entire thing, you can always die cut them or cut them down and just use a portion of them on your card project. Now, this is one of the ones that I wish I would have left. I mean, it looked beautiful with the swipes across it. And since I messed it up and I didn't like it, I went ahead and just used that same applicator to do stripes or swipes again and leave it because that is the hardest thing for me is just being able to leave it. Now you can also drop on the blending solution just like I did with the Copic at the beginning and then drop some of the colors into it. You don't necessarily have to drop the blending solution onto the paper prior to adding the colors. This Yupo paper will allow that ink to move even if you don't have the blending solution on there first. And I actually found that I got better results if I just added the ink to the Yupo paper and then kind of left it and added the blending solution later. So I actually, I think I prefer adding the blending solution at the end rather than at the beginning. And you can see how this kind of moves and they blend and you get these really cool looks. Now you will notice that I'm wearing gloves in all of these projects. And that's because I am the biggest klutz in the entire world. And I actually had just gotten a manicure this morning and I was trying to avoid ruining my manicure. And guess what? I ruined my manicure. <laughs> I have one blue fingernail because I dropped the alcohol ink onto it. And that alcohol ink just does not want to come off of my nail and the skin around it, no matter what I do. So I'm just waiting for all my skin to slough off so that I can have my nails back to pretty again. <laughs> So here is an example where I have an added blending solution to my paper at first, and I'm just adding the color onto the Yupo paper. 
And you can see I had a huge mess going on at this point that alcohol ink rolled right across my project, but that's okay. I'm gonna just keep going. And I wanted to create kind of this swoosh down starting at the top into that bottom corner of this ink. So I started that out and now I'm going to add my blending solution a little more sparingly by using the foam applicator. And you can see I'm tapping the foam applicator off to get some of that ink off so that I don't muddy this up too much. And then I'm gonna leave it, which is the hardest part for me to do. <laughs> Here I am once again, no gloves, crazy woman, I shouldn't have done this. But I am now tapping that alcohol ink onto some acetate. Because alcohol ink will dry on non-porous surfaces, it is a great medium for coloring things like acetate and embellishments, plastic, glass. It will dry on all of those things. So it is not like a dye-based ink that won't dry on these non-porous surfaces. So if you have things like acetate that you want to color, alcohol ink or Copic marker refills or Copic markers themselves are something great to try on these types of mediums. It will also dry on metal and glass, this alcohol ink. So if you're looking for something to kind of color those, that's a great option. Now I'm doing a few of these on acetate here and this one I thought I would do a full eight and a half by 11 sheet and kind of create a water background using just my kind of aqua and teal colors here. And this is really beautiful. It would make a really beautiful window for a window, like a die cut window card for a mermaid card. Yes, the mermaids, gotta love the mermaids. Or for a shaker card as well. So here I'm just showing you that you can also move these around by blowing them. And this is one of the most popular things. So I'm just adding a little blending solution and then I'm blowing with my mouth. You can use a straw, you can use like one of those little squeezy tools that blows ink from a marker onto your project. I just used my mouth because I was too lazy to go to my kitchen to get a straw. So that's an option as well and you can create lots of fun looks. Here, I just wanted to show you that you could also use this to color things like sequins and pearls. So this is just some sparkling clear sequins that I've added some ink over the top as well. And here's a look at all of the different backgrounds that I created. Once again, calling these the unicorn projects because they just remind me of unicorns. I don't know, what do they remind you of? Do they remind you of unicorns? <laughs> you can let me know in the comments below. So what I did was I just took all of these and I cut some of them down into backgrounds and I die cut some of them and kept my projects really simple. So here's a look at my completed projects. You can see I used some of them as entire backgrounds and some of them I die cut that hooray die cut and just use those on their own. And that's an example of just using part of a background that maybe you don't like the entire thing but you like an area. It makes really beautiful die cuts as well. Now, I also heat embossed a coordinating sentiment, a great big happy birthday, and put those on vellum and just kind of layered those over the top of those white hooray die cuts. And I think that was a great way to allow these backdrops to really take center stage and just add a simple embellishment to them to create a finished card. Now you will notice on some of these that when I added my sequins, the adhesive kind of pulled up the alcohol ink, that water-based adhesive kind of changed the ink around those sequins. So you may want to use like a glue dot to adhere your sequins so that you don't run into that as well. As always, I will have links to the featured supplies in the description at YouTube, but for a complete list of supplies, more still shots, and more information, be sure you head on over to the Coordinating In Touch blog post, which I will have linked below as well. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed these projects and I hope you enjoyed this exploration of alcohol inks as I kind of played in my craft room and brought you along with me. If you have any questions, be sure to leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who you think may enjoy it as well. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.